prevent him from leaving. I can't go outside that door. There's a seal. If I break the seal, and there's repercussions for that. It's a horrible feeling. You feel like you're in prison. You feel like you've done something wrong. It's inhumane what they're doing. Some people are yelling out, we're starving. We've not been allowed to socialize. The struggle ended with Beth taking her own life. We've had our businesses closed. We've lost jobs. You know what's going on in Florida. You know it as well. Some citizens are losing it by screaming from their apartment windows into the night. Threats to separate families. Don't take her away, please. Don't take her away. The primary school children being taken away to quarantine camps. They are being locked up alone without their parents. The child locked up alone inside a metal box. Collapsing, collapsing, collapsing. Collapse. Collapse. Seems that there's a second player who's collapsed. This is unusual. I've never and seen anything like this. Yeah, 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 what's going on? Yeah, well, what's happening? It is now well established that teens and young adults, but it's not just athletes, it's children, it's perfectly healthy. I saw secrets of the governments of this world. And the year 2020 was marked out when they want all things in control to submit them to the God of this world and say, now, here is your world. The certain things the Spirit of God was showing me last night. And then he told me to tell you to start preparing. To start preparing for the time which he has set. He said the forces of darkness have for so long intimidated his people. So much so that many of his people have found themselves subjects to the forces and authorities of darkness. Then he said, but my people, whom I have reserved, my people shall be an example to the church and to the world that my kingdom reigns supreme. You see, he started to show me certain things that would happen. And he started to show me especially the year 2020, I know we are not yet in 1st January. <laughs> and I, I am not yet there. I'm just sharing with you what he showed me. And then he said, You see, I saw secrets. I saw secrets of the governments of this world. And I saw them in unison, working hand in hand, behind the scenes, trying to bring about things. And the year 2020 was marked out when they wanted, when they want all things in control to submit them to the God of this world and say, now, here is your world. But then he said, remember what the angel said to you. He said that the people whom he has committed for these last days. It's being about you. He says, you shall be the dominant force. He said, you are the restraining power. That is spoken of in 2 Thessalonians. The restraining power. And then he says that when salt loses its saltiness, it's worthless. But because of the salt and the light that you are, and that you have maintained, you are that restraining power. And because you are that restraining power, there is restlessness in the kingdom of darkness. And they cannot pass anything just because of you. They cannot, they, they, they just cannot run the world, run the nation down into darkness just because of you. You see, they are wishing and praying that you didn't exist. Because you are that force that restrains evil from running rampant. 
You see, and he said, there are a number of nations and then the church abroad that will begin to see the movement of the Spirit of God in our midst. How we arise and they will arise as well and realize and know that darkness does not have dominion over light. They will know this. Let me tell you, these last days are not days where children of God are hidden somewhere in closets. These are days actually where the greatest display of the dominion of his kingdom is going to be seen. I am talking about, I am talking about authorities tumbling over because they have touched the anointed of God. I know what I'm talking about. It's hard to imagine this is how 2020 started. But across the world, dozens were falling ill with a mysterious virus that would ultimately change life as we know it. COVID-19, the disease that defined our lives in 2020. 2020 is now the deadliest year in U.S. history. 2020 was marked out when they wanted, when they want all things in control. Abuses, as you know, thrive when no one is watching and new powers seized by autocratic governments in the name of a pandemic are unlikely to be rescinded when it has passed. Yet in the last two months, we've seen more than 80 governments rush through emergency laws that grant them sweeping new powers over their people. Governments have criminalized so-called fake news on the pandemic and had scores of journalists arrested while deadly untruths have spread. An open letter from 500 former world leaders and Nobel laureates warned COVID-19 increased global authoritarianism that threatens the future of liberal democracy. Leaders across the world are using this to push through far, far more aggressive uh, autocratic measures. Never in the history of mankind has there been a time where governments took full control of even individual rights. Government workers sealed his front door to prevent him from leaving. I can't go outside that door. There's a seal. If I break the seal, and there's repercussions for that. Actor Nick Mikal posted videos on Instagram questioning why URA and police officers could enter his home on July 31st without a warrant or court order. I saw secrets of the governments of this world and I saw them in unison working hand in hand behind the scenes trying to bring about things and the year 2020 was marked out when they wanted when they want all things in control. The prophecy also highlights that this was a revelation of secrets of the governments of this world and in a remarkable fulfillment of prophecy. A global conspiracy to reset the world using the pandemic was exposed in 2020. Here's from the World Economic Forum website. Now is the time for a great reset. This was in June 2020. Now is a historical moment, a time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. It is an opportunity we have never had before and may never have again. We must not miss this unique window of opportunity. Unprecedented opportunity to rethink and reset the ways in which we live we need a great reset. The great opportunity for reset. How do the World Economic Forum and the United Nations intend to bring about this great reset they keep promising us? Well, they need national and state governments and other bodies to play along. And one of the key tools they are using is a three-word slogan. Build back better. We will build back better from the COVID crisis. Build it back better better to come back stronger and build back better build canada back better build back better build it back better build back better build back better build back better than before build back better start to to build back in a positive way build back better has bizarrely been the slogan for all sorts of different political groups around the world this is a coordinated agenda this isn't meant to end 
the so-called Great Reset, which is deliberately designed to strip away your liberties and your rights using the tools of oppression and the opportunity provided by the COVID pandemic. And I saw them in unison, working hand in hand, behind the scenes. True to the accuracy of the prophecy, global leaders worked in unison to use the global COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 as an opportunity to initiate a new plan for global control. It's interesting that they're all singing from exactly the same hymn sheet. Klaus Schwab spoke about using the COVID pandemic as an opportunity to bring about the Great Reset. Build Back Better appeared in the slogans and catchphrases of many, many, many world leaders all at the same time. Well, in order to maybe throw people off the scent, they've introduced a third phrase. The third phrase is the future we want. Listen to this. If we do not act now, decades of development could be lost. If we do not act now, the 2030 agenda could be out of reach. Despite all the challenges, this is a historic opportunity to build back better and green. We must raise the bar of ambition to attain the future we want. A future that is fair, safe, inclusive, and sustainable. We are taking concrete actions to transform declarations into reality. We are joining forces because we believe that together we are stronger. Together we can go further. The future is in our hands. Will you join us? The future we want. 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 These last days are not days where children of God are hidden somewhere in closets. These are days actually where the greatest display of the dominion of his kingdom is going to be seen. The prophecy mentioned that 2020 would not be the time for the children of God to be hidden in closets. This was a prophetic revelation of the unprecedented church lockdowns and bans on church gatherings, as well as brutal crackdowns on churches that didn't subscribe to this globalist agenda, causing the children of God to rise up and challenge the church lockdowns. Pastor Paul Furlong, he refused Monica to close his church so he's now, I believe, in custody without bail? That is correct. On Sunday, worshippers packed into the river at Tampa Bay Church despite health warnings, strict social distancing guidelines, and an order to close all but essential services. Its pastor, Rodney Howard Brown, received several warnings from police before he was arrested on Monday. Calgary pastor Tim Stevens has been arrested after months of encouraging church congregants to break public health rules. I'd like to address a situation that has evolved with Grace Life Church. The RCMP decided to take the pastor into custody as a result of repeated violations of public health orders. Security operatives still have in custody nine people that were got praying yesterday. The Alberta pastor on trial for violating public health orders blasted COVID-19 restrictions while taking the stand Monday. A Superior Court judge is ordering Calvary Chapel San Jose to pay more than a million dollars in fines for violating the county's public health order during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. When salt loses its saltiness, it's worthless. The prophecy spoke of a lack of saltiness and 2020 saw many church leaders supporting governments to enforce lockdowns of places of worship and persecuting the body of Christ. Leaders of six Christian denominations are urging the governor to stay the course and extend his stay at home order. I implore the citizens of Wisconsin to take action. Mask up, it's not hard. Wearing a face mask is an act of caring for others. Well, as far as the pandemic is concerned, I think we need to follow the science and do what they tell us to do. So stay safe, friends. Continue to wash your hands. Continue to stay at home. Continue to self-quarantine. The faith were dispensed from personally attending the sound obligations during this period when public gatherings are banned. Stay at home. We in the Church of Uganda have already supported the President's gu guidelines to cease public gatherings of worship. As a faith leader, 
it's kind of a no-brainer that people should take care of each other. Reverend Monica Dobbins helped draft this letter, signed off by more than two dozen faith leaders from all different religious institutions across Utah, all sharing one message, wear masks and practice social distancing. The house of worship turned into a vaccination clinic. We shouldn't be surprised that God uses science many times to accomplish his purpose. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts.